How's it going everybody? Hope you're all having an amazing day. In this video, we're going to be breaking down Dead Man Mode Apocalypse. We're going to be going over the news post that Old School RuneScape just posted that is going to dive deep into everything that you need to know about Dead Man Mode Apocalypse. There's a lot to read here, so I'm going to jump right on into it. If this video helps you out at all, then help me out by hitting that like button. But let's just go ahead and cut this plug and get right into it. So Dead Man's going to be coming out Friday, August 25th at 12 o'clock eastern time go ahead and do the conversions from there but it's going to run for three weeks with the world's closing on friday september 15th at 9 eastern go ahead and do your conversions there that's not where the journey ends for dead man however because the finale worlds are going to be opening up the following saturday on september 16th at noon eastern and you're gonna have one hour to get logged into the finale world and then the apocalypse is going to begin at 1 p.m eastern on september 16th now they're gonna dive a little bit more into the breaches and they say that they are trying to avoid having the breaches spawning too frequently so that players are hungry to attend where possible and so they don't absolutely flood the world with powerful gear so here are the times that they're anticipating for three breaches to appear per day three o'clock p.m eastern 10 o'clock p.m eastern and six o'clock in the morning eastern they say that they've tried their best to spread them out so that players in their most common time zones don't have to go too much out of their way to attend a breach or two each day. Let me know what you guys think about the timing of those down in the comments, but let's go ahead and move on down to death mechanics here. That's all pretty straightforward there, except for this one right here. Any items in your safety deposit box, which you can access via financial wizards in various banks, which can hold up to 10 slots, will be protected. I thought that before you still, I thought in previous Dead Man's you still lost items that were in your safety deposit box. Correct me if I'm wrong on that in the comments. Just as a quick reminder, muling, which is the practice of storing your valuable items on another account that you're not actively using to participate in Dead Man, is against the rules and will be punished as such but let's go ahead and move on to combat bracket world and quest unlocks this is a big one so let's go over the couple of tweaks that they've made to the specific multipliers that they initially suggested and uh go from there they're saying at combat level 3 to 50 you're going to be looking at 10 times combat experience and a one times drop rate multiplier 51 to 70 same combat xp but a two times drop rate multiplier 71 to 90 15 times combat experience three times drop rate multiplier and it runs 15 times combat experience all the way down with the drop rate multiplier going up each time they say upon entering a new bracket including starting out in level 3 to 50 you'll be given one hour of pvp protection unique drops from desert treasure 2 the fallen empire bosses are exempt from this multiplier since world 45 players haven't had a reasonable opportunity to attain them yet at level 3 to 50 you're going to be unlocking ernest the chicken goblin diplomacy rune mysteries shield of arab druidic ritual priest in peril the restless ghost and animal magnetism so you can run and get yourself a ava's accumulator right off the bat levels 51 to 70 you're going to be having completed the starting for recipe disaster the we're looking at the mountain goblin pirate lumbridge evil dave and uh scratch subquest done on those you're gonna have the bigger and badder slayer perk unlocked and 100 percent favor in all of the current houses your option one is full completion of the fremnik storyline up to and including fremnik exiles plus all of its prerequisites or option two is partial completion of the elf storyline up to including roving elves plus of all of its prerequisites. So that's big. You got a big option to choose from right there. And I might have to make a completely separate video diving into what the different choices there really entail. But let's go ahead and move on to the level 71 to 90 uh, quest unlock. You're looking at Tree Gnome Village, Grand Tree. Those are probably a couple that the people will already have done at this point in time. Lost City, Merlin's Crystal, Monkey Madness, and the Malevolent Masquerade Slayer Perk. And then you have another couple of options as well. Option one, full completion of the Gnome storyline up to including Monkey Madness 2 and all of its prerequisites. Or 
partial completion of the Maharat storyline up to and including Desert Treasure, plus all of its prerequisites. So, moving on to the level 91 to 110 bracket, we're looking at Recipe for D Disaster, the rest of those sub, or at least two more of those sub quests being completed, Dragon Slayer, and Heroes Quest being completed. You're set with another couple of options. Option one, partial completion of the desert storyline up to inclu including Beneath the Cursed Sands. Or option two, partial completion of the Myrique storyline up to and including A Night at the Theater. Moving on to the last level bracket here, you're looking at the rest of Recipe for da Disaster being completed. Black Knight's Fortress, Holy Grail, Murder Mystery, One Small Favor, Shiloh Village, Jungle Potion, and King's Ransom. Finally, for your last option, you're looking at option one being full completion of the Dragonkin storyline, up to and including Dragon Slayer 2, or option two, partial completion of the Maharat storyline, up to and including the Secrets of the North. So... That's wild. There's a lot to go over there, and I'm going to have to make a separate video where we dive into each of those options and what kind of paths that they will lead you down. So moving on, though, because I, I don't we, there's a lot to go over here. We're just going to keep moving on in this video to items from auto-completed quests that can be reclaimed once via the Combat Tutors in Lumbridge. If you reclaim these and happen to lose any of them, you'll have to reobtain them yourself. You got uh, the crystal bow or the shield, the Draymond staff, ice gloves, monkey speak amulet, uh, a gree gree, a, a draken's medallion, amulet of ghost speak. Other items like Ava's devices or Ivan's staffs can be reclaimed through conventional means as if you'd lost them after completing the relevant quest. Those are all the freebies that you'll be able to tick off. So let's go ahead and move on into the points system to figure out how exactly we're all going to be progressing points wise in this dead man mode so this is just kind of a work in progress image here that they're showing you of the boss interface you'll be able to refer back into this and they do note that these points may not actually represent what the points for the bosses are in dead man mode apocalypse and you can earn points by doing more or less anything in game but they've put together a table of the specifics which you should look at more or less familiar to those anybody who's played fresh start worlds or leagues i'm assuming uh let's go ahead and uh, take a quick look at this your breaches you're gonna one point per damage dealt to the breach bosses so that's crazy actually clue scrolls you're gonna get a set of points for those combat achievement tasks a set a point for those uh, tier completions, big sets of points for those. This point system's a bit wild. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing because it's fairly straightforward, right? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments and how you think this point system's gonna play into it. But uh, let's move on to sigils, what I think is gonna be the uh, fun part of the dead man mode. So they are returning with a number of tweaks. So let's jump right on into those. They say they're not gonna be giving out a full list of all of these ahead of time since we'd like for you to discover new favorites as you progress and get excited every time you see a sigil drop. They say that you'll have the same choice for starter sigils as you did in Dead Man Reborn, as well as the ability to claim a free sigil once every 24 hours as a part of a starter pack just like before. Beyond your daily and starter sigils, you can both obtain them from all NPCs, but the tier of the sigil and the drop rate will improve as you progress to higher combat brackets. Alternatively, if you are a mercantile streak, then you can just buy sigils from other players via the Grand Exchange, though you won't be able to trade them directly with other players. As a reminder, you won't be limited to only two combat sigils this time around. Instead, you're free to mix and match however you'd like, whether that entails going all in on three combat sigils or taking a more mixed approach. Additionally, they've moved some previous sigil effects to a slot alongside a brand new utility item instead, meaning you'll be able to activate their effects from your inventory without taking up a sigil slot. In case you missed it in their initial blog, here's a sneak peek at some of the utility trinkets that you can expect to obtain throughout Dead Man Mode Apocalypse. You got the trinkets of the Trinket of Vengeance, this will cast the Vengeance spell without any requirements on a 30 second cooldown. That's crazy. Trinket, so we could do Barrage and Vengeance. Trinket of the Undead summons a random thrall without any requirements. 
fairy mushroom and then advanced weaponry gives the player a random corrupted weapon and it is lost upon activation can only be obtained from npcs as at breaches so this is like a trinket that you can have dropped for you they've selected a couple of sigils here to share a sneak peek of so let me know down in the comments what you guys think of these especially but let's read through them we got the sigil of the abyss which has been adjusted they say when rune crafting you gain 10 times as many runes increasing from five times during dead man reborn we also have the sigil of rampage which has been adjusted alternating combat styles will increase your rampage count up to a maximum of five consecutive stacks with the same style will reset the counter each rampage count increases your damage and accuracy by two percent decreased from three percent during dead man reborn all bonus damage will be reset to its base level if you're out of combat for 12 seconds you got the sigil of freedom which they say they've removed they activate the sigil to break free from binding effects cast on you by players so this will be something that you can activate in your inventory the sigil of the skiller you gain double experience in all skills this is something that you can activate in your inventory a new one the sigil of agile fortune when a mark of grace appears on a rooftop agility course 10,000 gp will appear alongside it that's not new we had that in a, a league sigil of augmented thrall the max hit of summoned thralls is increased by three times that's crazy and i wonder if that will pair with trinket of the undead that's wild definitely let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments but let's quickly move on here to corrupted weapons another big talking point that they had going on in the original blog post uh, they've opted to give corrupted weaponry reduced requirements compared to their normal al alternatives in the hope that you might be able to get use of them earlier or perhaps give you new things to think about when setting up your builds or your stats. So here's a list of all the six corrupted weapons, their requirements, and how they differ from their regular variant. We have the corrupted Void Waker. It requires 65 attack and stats are 20% lower than the Void Waker. The Corrupted Dragon Claws only requires 40 attack, and the stats are 20% lower than the Dragon Claws. Corrupted Armado Godsword only requires 65 attack, and the stats are 20% lower. Twisted Bow, 70 range, stats are 20% lower. The range strength is reduced from 20 down to 2. So Corrupt Twisted Bow is going to be ass, it looks like. Scythe of Viture, we got uh, 60 attack, 70 strength, 20% lower stats. Additionally, is charged using only blood runes, meaning it can be charged from anywhere in the game with no vials of blood required. Then finally, you got the Corrupted Tumican Shadow. This requires 75 mage, the passive, Equipped gear, magic accuracy, and magic damage multiplier effect is reduced from three times to two times in most places and from four times to three times inside the tombs of a masket. So those seem like decent changes to the corrupted weapons as compared to what they had originally proposed. Let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments. But finally, we have to go over the finale. So as they wrote earlier, you'll have one hour to log in to finale worlds before the apocalypse commences on Saturday. September 16th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They say fog will begin to fill Gillinor, pushing players to a final location to make their last stand. At the same time, breaching monsters will appear alongside the paths leading to the final area, meaning that no matter where you start out, you can expect to run into a handful of them as you make your way to, quote, safety. After a short while, the fog will spread further and push players into an even smaller area. Similar to the final squares you might have seen in the multi-combat finales during the previous Dead Man events. This is where your final fight will begin as you and other players battle it out to be the last one standing while fog creeps into the final square, ramping up in intensity until only one remains. At some stage after the finale is wrapped up, we'll begin selecting winners to receive prize money and announce the winners at a later date following checks from our anti-cheating team. The, the prize pool will be distributed as follows. $1,000 to the last player standing on each of the five worlds. $1,000 to 20 players based on, quote, point tiers. Three players at or above adamant tier. Five players at or above rune tier. Seven players at or above dragon tier. And five out of the top 25 players.
Finally, they talk about how it's merging, which is no big deal here. Um, I think we got just like some rule clarifications there. And other than that, that's really all there is to go over for Dead Man Mode Apocalypse. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments if you're excited for this. I'm definitely hyped to jump in here. It seems like a new way for them to be doing it. So it's definitely gonna be be some fun to jump into and see what happens with the breaches. See if we end up joining any clans or if we ride it out solo like we normally do. Other than that though, that's all the information I wanted to go through in this video. Be sure to come stop by, check out the live streams over at kick.com slash fridge. Patriot Gaming. We always have some good fun over there. But other than that, though, I hope you guys all have an amazing day. I'm out.